Well then, thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machine's Focke Wolf 190. This kit comes on five sheets of laser cut balsa wood. In the box you will find the sheets of balsa wood, the numbered parts list, instruction booklet, propeller kit, wheels and covering material, and the vacuum formed canopy. The first thing you want to do is to number all of the parts on the sheets of balsa according to the parts list. To build this kit you will need a scalpel or standing knife, balsa cement or super glue, pencil for marking and PVA glue. To begin building the kit firstly start by removing the parts in order by gently cutting the tabs which hold them into the balsa sheets. Make sure that the cuts break across the grain to reduce any pressure when pulling the pieces out of the sheet. Should just pop clear like so. The first parts you will need are parts 1A and 1B, the fuselage sides. After removing the parts from the sheet carefully, we can begin assembly. The first parts are 1A and 1B, the sides of the fuselage. Parts to join these together are parts 2A, the crossbody wing support, and 3A, the lower wing support. The crossbody wing support also forms the front of the cockpit here and goes into this line here in line with the cutout. Slide that in from the bottom, up flush, and then you'll see there's a tab slot just at the top there. Now, to keep this perfectly secure, you're going to need to trim bottom of the tab there just to get a very nice clean fit. I just compare that. And with a little trial fit, put it in and push it in. That should fit snugly now. Before gluing it, remember to use spare piece of balsa with a 90 degree edge fit it in place. Also dry fit the opposite side so that you can trim the tab or adjust any necessary points. Make sure that the bottom is flush up to the bottom of the fuselage. You can do so by placing it flat on your build surface and then using your 90 degree align glue gently along the inside of the seam. Making sure that it's tight up against. With part 2A in place you can insert the wing support 3A into the slot just forward of there. Push it down not all the way into the slot but just so it's flush with the bottom of the fuselage. Again, press it down firmly. As you see, there is a very small gap at the top. Then, again, using your 90 degree, just put a touch of super glue on the inside there, like so. Now, all of this will square up when the nose comes into play and the opposite side of the fuselage is put on. Now, we'll put part 1B, the opposing side of the fuselage, into the same section, slotting it over the lower wing supports. Pushing it down to sit parallel. And fitting in that top there. Now, glue just on the inside there. It's also a good idea to check everything square at this point. There we go. Perfect. Now, the next part in is going to be 4A, the cockpit rear section, and that slots in just behind the shaping of the cockpit and into the two tabs here, 
like so. So holding the cockpit, just push it down so it sits just like, gently in there with the tabs resting to the full extent down and just hold the fuselage together and apply a small dab of glue. Like so. Hold until it's firm and then we will start with the nose section. The next part to install is part 5A, the nose support section. Now, if you'll notice there is a flat cutaway on the top of this. Make sure this goes upright into the fuselage. And then carefully pinching together the two nose sections, slot them into the tabs on part 5A, like so. Make sure that they're fitting flush. You can put the nose downwards to get it supported. And then carefully glue it in place. The next part, part 6A, is the fuselage rear former. That slots in here, just behind the cockpit rear former, and down into the tabs, like so. Slide it fully all the way down. As you can see, the curve of the bottom will protrude below the aircraft like so. Make sure the taper of the tail is appropriate and everything's aligned. And then do on the inside. Keep up pressure until the glue is set. Continuing on, we have the tail rear former. Part 7A, which fits into the two slots towards the rear of the fuselage and the tail section. This goes down into the tabs here. You fit it by gently tapering the ends together. As you taper it, you'll see that you'll need to just very gently sand away or shave away some of the material so that it fits better into the slots. You can do this with a nail file, a bit of sandpaper, or just the edge of your cutting knife. Then taper very gently together. Hold it in place. All the way down into the slots. And then just by sight align the tail sections together until you're happy with the way they're sitting. Like so. And then glue the inside of the former to the fuselage as you'll see, you'll see the oval protruding below the fuselage like so. The next part to install is 8A, the instrument cluster, which sits right behind 2A at an angle here. You'll be able to see two cutouts on each side there. Lay the cockpit former across the two in line with the cutout in 2A. And then just gently glue the edges in place. Part 9A is the fuselage floor. Now there is a bit of flexibility in the placement of the fuselage floor. It can go directly underneath the cockpit like so. You can move it backwards across this cross member here and just sand it away slightly. But if you are placing it underneath the cockpit, just make sure that it aligns at the bottom here. And it's straight on both sides. Pinch the fuselage together to hold it in place. Make sure that it is seated correctly. Also make sure that it doesn't protrude past the bottom of the fuselage and then just glue along the edges, and in this case, to part 2A, the support beam. Yeah. Hold that until it's fully dry. Part 10A is the fuselage floor, a strangely shaped part. This also has the wing fitting guides on it here. This sits on the bottom of the fuselage, buttered up to the end of the curvature here where there's a slight dip. Align this to the sides of the fuselage 
and then glue along the edges where it meets the fuselage and also if you can reach on the inside edges and here to the front edge where it meets 3A. With the bulk of the airframe in place it's time to start assembling the tail. The first part is 11A the tail upright followed by 12A the tail triangle brace and 13A the horizontal tail plane. Be very careful with the horizontal tail plane as the lattice work is quite delicate here until it's been covered. So taking 11A in hand you'll want to take the triangular former and slot it into the lower of the two slots on the tail upright tapered backwards. Now you may need to slightly sand the inside of here for a firm fit. Don't push it in too hard or it will crack against the grain. Push it all the way back you're happy with the fit and then glue along the edges on both sides. Now, very similar process with the tail horizontal plane. Slot this into the upper of the two slots going all the way backwards until it sits firmly there. Now it's a good idea to use a 90 degree angle here just to make sure that your tail is sitting where it should be. Don't be afraid to take your time over this and make sure that it's right, sitting where you want it to be and that, that 90 degrees is perfect. I'm actually going to use a bigger 90 degrees just to ensure In place, I'm now going to glue it everywhere it touches to the second panel. With that first glue solid, I'm going to glue it all the way along, getting a nice tight bond the whole way. That is the beginning of the tail section which we are going to fit in the tapered end of the fuselage like so. Now that fits between the two extended arms and the tail will curve to meet the end of the triangle like so. Slot it in, bring the sides or the arms of the fuselage up to meet there and then taper in the tail like so. Make sure that the center line is aligned like so. Then turning it over, glue the two arms to the horizontal tail plane. Making sure it's down solid. Then at the very back here, just drop some glue down into these arms. get that all nice and tight glued together. So we have the beginning of the tail in section. Now we'll finish the rest of the fuselage. The next parts to fit are part 14A and B, which are the main fuselage top farmers. Now part 14A you'll notice is a lot shallower and has a smaller cut in the top. This goes towards the forward of the aircraft and slots into these two slots here just to the rear of the cowling. Carefully slot that down like so. Press them in all the way until it fits flush. Then do the same with 14B towards the cockpit. Like so. Yeah. If there is a little bit of extra on each side you can pinch slightly together and then glue into place once you're happy. Of course hold it while gluing. Don't worry if there's a little bit of pronounced balsa on the edges, this can all be sanded down towards completion of the build. Parts 15 A and B, which are the forward fuselage lower formers, are the same and they fit into the two slots on the bottom of the nose section. 
Uh, these are quite delicate, so just be careful when putting them on. You can trim them if needed, just a little shave on the tabs, bring them down. But obviously, you don't want them to be loose. Just get them so they just push into place, seat it all the way down. Like so, and then glue them where the tabs pass through the fuselage. Like so. The next part to fit is the power bulge nose top, which is part 16A. Now this sits on top of the nose section here, resting from 5A backwards into the little slots in the top, all the way to the front of the cockpit there. Now, as you're fitting, you can always fat a little bit to make it fit just that little bit better. And it'll come down at an angle like so. Fit into place and just push it in. So it touches all the tabs as needed, or trim away as needed as well. I'm going to start gluing from the rear where the cockpit is. Settling it in place like so. Putting glue underneath. And then bending it down to where I need it to meet the front section. To start building up the cowling, we're going to start with part 17 A and B, which are these two interlocking semicircular parts. They plug into each other like so. They're self-aligning. So just square them up on a flat surface and then run some glue along the crack. Be careful not to glue it to the table at the same time. You'll see from that that your grain goes in two directions for extra strength. There's a hole in the middle for the rubber to pass through onto the cotter pin. This is part 18 A and B, and these plug into each other like so in exactly the same way. And then again, just glue them to each other, making sure that they're flat because these are going to layer on top of each other. Like so. I wait for those to dry up. Continuing on, we're building the same ones with parts 19A and B. You'll see how part 19A and B fit together again, of course. Gluing in exactly the same manner. Pushing them together firmly. Glue along there now. And then, of course, the same with part 20A and B. Plot them together. It's one of the great things about this jigging method. And then do it firmly, keeping it flat. All of these sections are going to lay on top of each other, starting like so. And when you do layer them on top of each other, just by hand, by feel, by touch, by sight, align them all to be the best circle with each other. And then once you're happy with it, run some glue on them just to hold them in place. Then layer them in order, starting with part 17A and B, and obviously pop 18A and B on top there. Put some glue on the inside there, just for a little bit of added strength, to hold it all together. Try not to get too much glue around the outside edge, because as you're sanding it back, it'll look better with less glue on it, and you'll get more even sand. Then the next part, of course, is 19B. Let's slot that on. That rectangle in the middle should serve as a rough guide to align it. And then, gluing and So now, once you've got all this built up and attached to the aircraft, you're going to want to sand it down with either a a nail file or a little bit of sandpaper. I like to use a little file like this. 
Right, just finish your layering. Again, use that rectangle in the middle as a rough guide, and then it's always good to align by touch. Glue along that inside. Inside is not going to be seen by anyone, so you can get plenty of glue on that, and it's still absolutely fine. And then just get it nice, firm, all pressed together, and give it a moment to dry. Part of the nose is 21A, which is a flat circle with a small hole in the middle, which is going to pass the cotton bin through. Now this needs careful alignment because it's slightly smaller, as you'll see. So just turn it until you're happy that it's the same distance the whole way around, and then lifting it slightly, just glue it in place, like so. Part 22A is the final part of the cowling, and it also needs to be aligned in the same way. This is the final ring, and can be glued on that inside edge, there, quite firmly. Like so. And that is the nose together. We'll attach that now in a moment. With the sections of the naso all glued together, you'll see there is one solid part on the front where your cotton bin will pass through for your drive. If you are converting to micro RC, you're going to need to cut out the inside of this section here to give you enough space to fit the motor, dry fit the motor and all the electrics before gluing it to the front. What I'm now going to do is use a file, you can also use some sandpaper, to sand away the edges, curl everything in, and then just create more of a domed effect as you go around. And you can take as long over this as you like, get it as smooth as you want. You just want a nice rounded effect, like the Fluffy Wolf nose hat. Make sure that you're getting down to all the same levels, but at the same time, also make sure you're keeping a nice circular roundness to it. A good way of doing this would be to lay down some sandpaper and then spin the nacelle around. Onto the sandpaper like a wheel. And I'm just going to rough sand it for now. But as you can see, you're starting to take on that domed cowl effect. Now don't go too far down on the front here. Try and keep that in line there. Um, if you do accidentally sand away too much, you can always make a little bit of filler by sanding down balsa into a dust and mixing it with PVA glue. And then once you're satisfied with that, we can start attaching the round nacelle to the front of the aircraft. With the rounding completed, I'm going to attach the nacelle or cowling to the front of the aircraft now. Spin it until it fits all the way around and you'll find that it's not a perfect circle but as you spin it will fit and then it will come in line to the top there and at the bottom and you'll be able to finger check the whole way around that it's aligned. Get some glue just behind it and then attach it like so. It's a good idea at this point to fit your rubber motor through here which is done through the front here and then obviously your matchstick sitting further back here behind the support as far back as you want to run it all the way up to the tail section if you like put in the matchstick trim it run your rubber round to the grommet and pass it through here and then bend over your cotter pin ready to receive 
the propeller closer to finishing. The next part to fit are the three shaping sections which fit onto the side of the fuse larger than the cell and then follow around the design. Um, you'll see that part 24A which is the middle former is longer and fits just into that little gap like so. Now that pushes in there and then you can align it to the front like so. And that should come straight forward, straight in, then start by gluing it at the front, just in that corner there, underneath, and then pushing it down further back, and then just using the pressure of the finger, curving it back to meet the fuselage, and gluing it. This is going to form the curved sides of the fuselage and give the aircraft its rounded shape leading up to the big round of nacelle. Now then you want to go in with part 23A which is the upper side format that slots in above like so. Just move that up to the top extremity of the cutouts Very gently. You could even use tweezers for something like this here and then once you've got it in place again just glue, push down at the front, moving backwards everywhere it comes into contact with the fuselage. Then the next part is the lower former 25A or B, it's the same on both sides. That goes in at the bottom of the cutouts and just press that into place, moving it down as low as possible. And then again, repeat. Coming along that edge, you'll see how it's stuck now to curve up the front of the aircraft and bulk out the engine area. And we'll repeat that on the opposing side. Again, the longer part in the middle. Get that aligned like so. glue from the front backwards, keeping it tight to the contours of the aircraft. And when you when you actually cover the aircraft, these are what's going to give the tissue covering its form and you won't see what's underneath there. And then finally the lower of the three. Make sure it's down tight, it'll give it the straightness and follow the contours. There you go. Now with those in place, what we can do is we can just gently sand these here in line with that rounded nacelle powering there. Just take a little bit off. Obviously we're going to give everything a little bit of sand down just for finishing the full covering. I like to just round these out in case I should get them later on. Because these sharp edges will make covering quite difficult. Again, you could use your knife for this and just, just gently ease away the balsa to trim it down but you'll get a, a much smoother finish with a file or sandpaper. Right, now we'll move on to the stringers. To uh, begin with the stringers you're going to want to find stringers type B. Now these are located on the bottom of the second sheet and you'll see these come together here. What I'm going to do is cut the entire section out of the sheet. Right. So these have been spaced so that you will end up with far more stringers than you actually need because they are very delicate, easily broken. You can use them while you're building or keep them as spares 
if you have any damage later on. You just cut the whole section out, lift it free, and then you should be able to just very carefully bend them, break them off. Just run the back end of the blade through them. Ease them apart. Right. Now, I'm going to choose the thicker ones to install in the front here, like so. Now, these will need trimming to length, and they're going to fit just behind the dashboard unit there, so I'm going to line it up there in the top of these stringer holes and then just mark it with a knife trim it like so slide it into place where I want it you want to get the flat of the wood going in the same direction as the curvature and then Do it into the holes or slots in the top of the fuselage shapers. Try not to get an excessive amount of glue on the outside of these because you'll run the sanding paper over it. And I'm going to do the same with the other side. Dry fit so that they fit the slots on the very front. Mark with my knife. Pop it in where I want it, as far forward as possible, as flat to the contours as possible, that will mean I won't have to sand it much later. And then do into place. Now you'll be able to see how it's built up that ridged nose of the Bucky Wolf. At this point you can also fit the underneath springers which are done in exactly the same way. Starting at the nose, fitting them into that little tab slot there, then just support these underneath springers as you just ease in the stringer there and then very carefully bend the stringer back into this middle hole here on the bottom of the fuselage. This is going to give the bulge to the bottom of the aircraft between the wings. They mark just a little bit of glue in there. Should hold it in place and then once it's in glue it around and glue along where the stringer fits in the tab. You'll see now it gives it a pronounced power bulge. Same on the opposite side, starting at the front, very importantly. Now, this stringer follows a slightly different contour. This is going to give a more rounded effect, so you're going to want to bend it into the tab slot as it goes, all the way to the back, and then glue it into the tabs so that it sits securely and follows a very rounded bend line. And then goes in like so. Yeah, and as you can see from the side profile now, it's got a very rounded power bulge bottom coming up to the 
round of cowling and the power bolt on top. And the wings are going to sit here and this power bolt will be semi hidden underneath. But when you do the covering, it's going to give it that fantastic bold round effect. Now the stringers to the rear are exactly the same. They're listed as stringer type A. Do the same thing with them. Cut the entire section out so that you've got some spares. There's the spaces between the stringers, but also become strings. And pop them off, choose the ones you want. For the rear of the fuselage, I'm going to want to select the centre one first and put that into the top of the fuselage rear section there into that slot and push it up to the little cutout just in the front of that tail section there. Now Focky Wolf, the tail is a very prominent feature so it needs to fit the part correctly. Glue that into place. Like so, into the top here. It should all naturally fall into place where it should be. Now, carry this on with the side stringers at the rear. Now, these are going to arch backwards and touch into the tail, so just overlap the tail section a little bit there far back as you like because you can bend that in there and glue it and then start with the central one here and just put a little bit of glue on there because it needs to curve slightly inwards make sure that it's in that tab at the front and at the rear and then curve that in to meet the tail and just use a tiny amount of glue Hold it to the tail. Of course, exactly the same on the other side. Make sure that you've got the same length of protrusion over the tail section, otherwise, it'll look a little bit unbalanced. Clear in the middle, follow it back, and then give it that tail in. Once you're happy with where they're sitting, all glued in solidly, use your knife to shear them away in line with the rear firewall of the cockpit. Do this as gently as possible, they are very delicate. And then slice, slice. That's all of the excess cut away, and now you can see the shape of the Focky Wolf coming together very nicely. There is place for one more stringer on the bottom of the aircraft. And this runs from the tail section up to between the wings and helps give that curvature to the bottom of the aircraft. So put that into the bottom of the fuselage formers, slide it all the way back to just underneath the tail wheel there, glue it into these slots like so and to where it meets the tail wheel and then just here where it comes into that small cutout between the wings trim it in line with that hole and then just very carefully push it down into the hole set flush and glue. Ah. You can see the fuselage now is very complete, missing the tail section and the wings, which we will start building next, laying them aside. To start building the wings, you're going to need to start with one side. So choose either parts A or B. Start with 26A, <coughs> the leading edge of the wing. 
and 26, uh, 27 a the trailing edge of the wing. Note that the control surfaces or ailerons are removable from this. This is for conversion to micro RC or if you're building a static model and you want to arrange the ailerons. So what we're going to do is first lay the parts together in their jigsaw, jigsaw format. As you can see these peg straight into each other on a flat surface. Align these jigsaws to each other and then as we did earlier with the nose sections, just run glue fully over the bond, allowing them to glue solidly together. Keep both ends in place and as they should be aligned, and make sure that you don't stick it to your work surface. The next part is wing profile type C. This is the shortest type with two round holes in it. There are only two of these and they go on the outer edge of each wing. Place the first one in to the outside slots in the wing. Align it to the leading edge of the wing flush and then do it vertically like so. Next one is wing profile type A, which is the inner side of the wing. As you can see, this fits into these slots. It's the longest side. And align it as far forward as you can into the notches here. And then do it on this edge. As you can see here, you've now completed the external wing tip and the internal wing stem. If you are doing this for free flight rubber, you'll want to glue in the ailerons permanently into place. So just slot those where you want them and then glue along the edges into place. You could of course use paper hinges for these or threaded hinges through these little cutout holes here which would fix them in quite well. Just get a nice little bottom hole way along and make sure that you don't glue it to the table, just keep it moving and twisting. The next parts to fit you'll see are wing profiles type B. Now beginning from the outside wing tip, slot these loosely without gluing into the little cutout slots. Turning to wing profile type A, the longest ones, you want to slot these in closer in the longer slots to the centre of the wing. Just make sure when you are cutting these out of the wooden sprues that any debris is removed. Now as you can see with all the wing ribs in place, they're still very loose apart from the inner and outer ones. What I'm going to do is take the main wing spar we found on sheet 5 and I'm going to lay that in place down the centre line of all of the ribs. Now this will allow me to adjust how the ribs sit. So I am happy with them. Like so, and you want that fairly straight. And then you can go along the wing and glue all of the front edges of those wing ribs in place, gluing it to the leading edge of the wing surface. And turn it around, press all the ribs down and glue all of the trailing edge, making sure to make contact with the aileron if the aileron is going to be fixed. And then wait a moment for that to dry. Then remove the center spar. 
are you ready to build the opposing wing? Now it's very important at this point that you build a mirror image for the opposite wing. As you can see, we've built the starboard wing. We're now going to build the port wing. So what I'm actually going to do is remove the parts and then lay them out. As you can see here, I've laid the two wing sections out as an absolute mirror image of each other before I start building the second wing. That way I know that I'll have one wing for each side of the aircraft. With both wings completed, it's now time to fit the wing tip formers, which are parts 32 A, B, C and D. Now there's two types of these, one slightly longer than the other. You'll need one of each and place these just on a wing tip here with the 90 degree angle to the center of the spar. Line them like so and just glue them along the bottom. You want to get the end of them perfectly lined up with the wing tips and then glue them to each other. Try and get them the same on both wing tips. It'll give you a more balanced appearance. And use that as a guide. So these are just going to give you a nicer wing tip when you cover the model, uh, just like so. Now with the wings completed, it's time to start fitting in to the fuselage. So taking the fuselage gently in hand, take the corresponding wing part and you will see on the very bottom of the fuselage there is an extra lip stuck out from the fuselage lower former. That corresponds to the slot in the wing. Slide that on like so and then align that up flat surface to flat surface and lay the wing slightly upwards. Now the wing will fall against the wing former which is part 2A and 3A. So with that in place, glue those two wing guides first. And then glue the wing stem to the wing support at the bottom. Hold everything in place until it dries at the correct angle. Right, repeat this on the opposing wing, allowing the guides create a heatral angle and using that flat edge to butt up against. Glue it down on the inside and along that flat edge. Right, you can also turn it over and just glue these edges like so. that all dry carefully. Um, you can slightly bend the wing tips upwards just to hold into there or you can fill it in with a little bit of spare balsa. I like to just slightly sand this top here and then let the tissue covering do the rest of the work. Let that dry for a good while. Now with both wings in place you can fit the main wing spar and this is simply done by laying it down the top of the ribs where you test fitted it before, sliding it up to touch the fuselage. You'll see it comes above that wing support spar there. Press it down carefully into the top of all of the ribs, right along to the wing tip. That should form a good fit. You may need to trim it just on the edge here, but in this case you don't. Then glue it into the top of each of the ribs. Make sure that you get glue right down in there. If you are building a flying model, uh, you could always replace this with some one millimeter carbon rod, but there's no need to. Then glue the wing spar to the top of part 2A, which is a wing support there. As you can see, that will form a really nice strong bond. And then you want to do the same 
with the opposing ring spar on the other side. Boom. Slot it all the way in. Slide it up flush and then drop it in nice and flush with the top of the ribs. Just going to trim that away very gently. Make sure it doesn't go down too far. You want it flush but not pushed in. And then do it all the way along connecting in. So, that's the wings attached to the fuselage, and the last part is the landing gear and tail, which we'll do now. When fitting the tail control surfaces, um, you can of course fit little paper hinges to them and glue them. Um, however, as this is a static model, I'm just going to glue them in place. Uh, for rubber free flight models, you'll probably want to glue them in place. And you can of course set the control surfaces to give whatever direction you want. Um, I'm going to glue it directly to it, run glue straight along the two parts fit together and I can attach the rudder carefully in place like so and I'm going to put ever so slightly a little amount of turn into it which is going to emphasize the shape. You don't have to do this, you can put it on dead straight, whichever takes your fancy. Just make sure that you're not gluing yourself to it. Right, just hold that till it's dry. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with the tail control surface. I'm just going to glue along the edges. Um, you could if you're building for free flight, have these set for whatever action you want the aircraft to perform or of course to help compensate for balancing, but I'm just going to put them in straight. You can also use uh, little paper hinges to make control surfaces operational if you are using uh, micro RC gear. Let's pop that in place. There you go. Now that is the majority of the Focke Wolf done and built. There is the vacuum form canopy included in the kit, which you simply trim around and fit in. There is also the cardboard cutout, which forms the rear of the canopy. That's in the black card that you'll see. And the in the instructions, you'll also see the cutout for the instrument panel, the seat, and the rear of the cockpit. The last few bits we're going to put together is the undercarriage, which in a flying model, of course, you won't be using. The landing gear comes in two parts. Part 30A is a side part, and 31A builds into the landing gear exactly like so. You want to make sure that the top T section is equidistant to each other, glue one into the other, just along the edge, leaving some room for flex at the top and fitting, then set the other one up as a mirror image and do exactly the same. Now, the landing gear fits into the bottom of the wing surfaces, like so. Plugging straight into this little T-shape here. And so, now the wings that come with the kit will be the Balsa Eco Wheels, and they glue onto the inside here, or you can use 
a little bit of wire or a pin just to glue them in place. Set the angle of the landing gear to where you want and then glue here and here. And that is the Focke Wolf airframe completed. Thanks again for buying Henson Flying Machines Focke Wolf 190. Please enjoy building. Thank you.